Well, alrighty. Thanks to all of you that submitted your questions for the weekly Q&A video. In fact, since I was a little delayed, you know, the whole working two jobs thing doesn't always allow for the most free time. As a result, as a result, it allowed more questions to pour in, and guess what? What in the bluest of blue fucks is going on here is probably what you're asking yourself. And the simple answer is you're getting a two-part Q&A. Oh my goodness. So part one is right now. Part two will follow up soon after. So if your question didn't get answered here, it might get answered there. You know the deal. Can't answer every single one of them as much as I might like to try. So anyways, anyways, let's go ahead and let's get to part one of the weekly Q&A. Mounties Corner asks, how do you feel about Double J having the best figure four ever? In fact, I think he invented the move. Now see, this is the type of limp dick shit, Mounty, that keeps your ass in Canada. You understand me, you Trudeau leg humper? Three, two, one. One, two, three. What the heck is bothering me? Three, two, one. One, two, three. You know the deal. It's not just fuck you, apparently, but this question is fuck me. Let me tell you something, Mountie. You'll leave me no choice. I'm going to put a breakfast club curse on your chromosomes right now. On everything that is the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. Praise God. Ugh. You just got married, right? Well, how's it going to feel when you make a daughter? And then you try it again, and you're like, no, my chromosomes are going to work perfectly this time. And then you get another daughter. I've put that voodoo on you. You're having daughters. That's what you get. You mess with the bull, you get the frickin' horns. Joke. Karen Chase. Oh, I'm sure this is going to be a lovely question, too. Surely down the same ridiculous line of questioning as the first one. Uh, wouldn't a team of Double J, Dolph Ziggler, and the Young Bucks rival the NWO and the Four Horsemen? Of course you would expect this type of highfalutin shenanigan bullshit from somebody like Karen Chase, who reveres somebody like a murderer like Ray Lewis. Oh heavens, he found the Lord, that's right, praise God! Maybe God can help him find his white suit from that night in Atlanta all those years ago, I'm just saying. This is, this is nowhere close to a realistically legitimate question. This is an attempt to try and troll me. And it won't work. It won't work. I got you. I got you, Karen. That's all I'm going to say. I got you. Don't try to troll the troll. I'm just, that's all I'm saying. WNC Podcast. Why does WWE mute slash lower the volume for Roman Reigns' entrance when they're supposedly in the reaction business? It is an excellent question. They can sit there and talk about the reaction and how it sounds in terms of like live television, and they're right. Even when the guy that is supposed to get cheered is getting the brakes booed off of him, it still has a certain vibe, a certain feel, a certain sound to it, like people are actually into the show. But later on, when they go through post-production, they are going to do what WWE does and try to control every single aspect of everything that they possibly can. Henceforth, as a result, this is what you get. Instead of figuring out how to do things the right way with the guy, they just assume the fans are wrong and try to change the reaction of the fans in perpetuity. That's what they do. It shouldn't be a surprise. They did it for years with Cena. They're doing the same thing with Reigns. What's the difference? Pro Wrestling Talk. What was the worst gimmick of the Hogan era? <laughs> Probably the gobbledygooker. <laughs> you got a set of legs like my mother-in-law, pal. <laughs> oh, and by the way, that Mountain Dew commercial that's got Kevin Hart and Mean Gene Okerlund. How the fuck are you going to have Mean Gene and you're not going to let him speak at all? Like, who gives a shit about Kevin Hart? He's five foot two, and he makes crappy movies. Mean Gene is fucking Mean Gene. 
more people know who Mean Gene is than Kevin Hart. Don't at me, as the kids say nowadays. Don't give me the flaming keyboard fingers of fire in the comment section because you know what's true. Bullshit. Bullshit. Mean Gene should be the one talking. Just saying. The King. Yeah, the gobbledygooker was bad. <laughs> they spent weeks building up to the egg in Survivor Series 1990. <laughs> Just so that way the egg could hatch and it was Hector Guerrero in a fucking tiny suit going... Bloom, bloom. <laughs> But you'll never forget it. The King asks, what piece of life advice would you give? Uh, like one single piece or several pieces? Um, if you're younger and you have the opportunity to go to school and continue your education, do that. Because as you get into your adult life and you don't do that, it becomes increasingly hard because you start to get the appeal of money and then having to step back from that to go to school is not very appealing because you put yourself in a situation where you have bills and so forth. Then you decide, you know, whether you're male, female, however your orientation is, you start getting that taste of pussy, that taste of cock, whatever the case might be. And as a result, you start focusing on that and you get caught up in all that goes along with that. Um, so stay in school if you can, if it in any way appeals to you in any way, shape or form. Uh, other pieces of life advice. Um, understand that as you get older, uh, you will trust and learn to like fewer and fewer people, and that is okay. You naturally, I feel like, shrink your inner circle, and that is healthy, and that's all right. Um, if you want something, go for it. Don't live your life with any regret. It's better to try and fail than have never tried at all. You know, what did Michael Jordan say? I failed over and over and over again, and that is why I succeed. Sometimes that's the best life lesson you can learn is through your failure. Sometimes repeatedly. Because eventually when you get to the mountain, you can sit there and say, hey, all that happened before, I've learned from it and become better for it. And just in general, don't live your life with regrets. Don't look back and say, I would have, could have, should have changed this bullshit, because you can't. So why bother? Choose to take a positive perspective on it, learn from it, try to make the best out of the situation, and make sure you don't repeat those same mistakes, because then you fit into that bucket of insanity. Um, there's so, so much else I could give, but those are just a few right now. Uh, Tommy CB asks, did you see Charlotte Flair in ESPN's Body Magazine? That's not really his question, but I guarantee he's buying the son of a bitch and he's spanking to it like nobody's business. He's like, oh, look at the manly build on that white bitch. Oh, God, it gets me so horny. I bet she'll lick my ass really good. She probably would, dude. And then she tried to fuck you up afterwards. His real question, though, is what is your honest take on the Nia Jax Alexa Bliss social media debacle? My God, I am so out of the loop. I did not even know there was a social media debacle. I did not know. <laughs> I, mean, I guess I'm going to have to actually go and look and see what was actually said. I have no clue. This is the first I've heard of it. Uh, Rick Styles, uh, key things you need to build a great wrestling faction. Um, a great wrestling faction, typically, you would want to have one truly established main event player. You'd like to have one veteran, reliable hand and then maybe a couple of younger dudes that you're trying to elevate. You want to be able to have that faction be able to go back and forth between different levels up and down the card from the curtain jerker spot to main event type of featured matches at big four special events. So you need guys that can talk, you need some muscle, you need a lot of different things. Those are just some of them that I could think of. Charles Mitchell, why does the Royal Rumble winner get to pick which champion they face, but the Money in the Bank winner doesn't? Hashtag WWE logic, hashtag WWE fail logic, hashtag WWE ruins everything. Piznix64, oh, Steven, Steven, Steven. What did you ask me this time? A good question. <laughs> First time, what do you think? Uh, why is Invader in the WWE Hall of Fame? Vader's not in the WWE Hall of Fame because I really don't have a great answer for you. They intentionally ran out of time. 
They just didn't see it as enough of a priority. You know, maybe there was something still where Vader didn't want to do it, but I highly doubt that. Like, he even went out and was talking about how much time he had left to live and everything else, which is kind of like dropping the subtle hint, hey, I'd like to have this, I'd like to have that. And frankly, he deserved it, so he should have. Um, but I think there were still some ill will and bad feelings between Vader and Vince specifically all these years. Um, and they just didn't prioritize it enough as a company, and that fucking sucks. Because it'll be yet another guy that will be inducted too little to way too damn late. It's the same type of shit with the Macho Man. Get him in while you fucking can. One of the best things about the Ultimate Warrior and his induction in 2014 was that it came while he was still technically alive. So he got to experience that. And then he had the heart attack and passed away. But at least we got to see Warrior experience that. We got to experience him coming back home. We didn't get that with Savage. And we're not really getting that with Vader. We just have to go back to 2012 and see his appearance where he's squashing Heath Slater in a couple of minutes. And that's basically what we got. We didn't get Vader in the Hall of Fame because Vince's petty in the WWE sometimes can be incredibly moronic. Uh, imputations. Since Becky Lynch beat James Ellsworth on his first try. I didn't know James Ellsworth was back in WWE until recently. But hey, what do you know? Uh, does that mean she should get a shot at the WWE title against AJ Styles? Because it took AJ four tries to beat him. And while that is all types of lacking in proper context, sure, what the fuck, why not? It would be easily one of the most interesting things and most attention-grabbing things the WWE has done in quite some time. Victor Tran 562. Do you have any interesting summer vacation stories or memories as a teenager? Interesting summer vacation stories? No, because broke asses typically don't get to go to summer vacations, Victor. So I don't really have any of those. Um, memories as a teenager? Good ones? Uh, <laughs> ooh, golly. Uh, most of the good memories as a teenager are tied up to when I was an athlete tied up into the Jordan led Bulls of that time, Sosa 66 home run season in 98, specifically that 20 home run month in June. Um, <laughs> maybe the one night we had a, we had a, <laughs> our cross country team had a banquet that we went to. I can't remember where the fuck it was. It doesn't matter. And the guest speaker was Billy Mills. Uh, the last American to win the 10,000 meters in the Olympics. He did it back in 64 in Tokyo. Uh, so he was there as a guest speaker. And if you've ever heard him speak, it's very good. But he's one of those what you would call beat around the bush guys. He'll sit there and go on and on and on talking about the secret of being a warrior. Do you want to know the secret? And after an hour and a half, I yelled out, just get on with the fucking secret. Spell it already. <laughs> and this is an Olympic champion. What a jerk move. I know. But um, I remember later on that night, we got the great idea that we were going to go TP our coach's car. And lo and behold, the dumb son of a bitch allowed us to know where he actually lived. We made sure we got that via reconnaissance efforts. And we went and we TP'd the hell out of his vehicle and it immediately rained afterwards. It was fucking epic. <laughs> we blasted his 96 Jeep Cherokee. It just got destroyed with toilet paper. <laughs> I remember my dad lived up in uh, a different town at the time, so a different high school, but it was still in the same conference, and somebody one year decided they were going to uh, teepee the shit out of his house, his yard, his trees, and he didn't like it, and he got pissed at me when I started laughing about it. Like, that's the type of shit I'm talking about. <laughs> fucking Peter Arnold. Only Peter Arnold will get all bent out of shape and butt hurt about fucking toilet paper. Get the fuck over it, dude. Jesus Christ, kids just had some fucking fun. I mean, they did designs and everything. It was quite intricate, so I did <laughs> But somehow it was my fault. Like, I came up there and TP'd your fucking house. Now, if I'd have done that, I'd have fucking egged you, son of a bitch, you cheap bastard. Moving on. Andrew Harrington, what in the world do some people see in Dolph Ziggler? And why in the bluest of blue fucks is he the Intercontinental Champion? That's not exactly the question. Andrew asked, that is the question the way that I interpreted it. Now do it with me. Buck, Dolph, Ziggler. 
Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Fuck Dolph Ziggler. And you get the point. I don't know. I don't know what people's obsession with Ziggler has been over the fucking years. I've never got it. I never understood it. Tony used to have a raging three-inch hard-on for the dude. I don't know what the hell anybody sees in the guy. Fuck him. That's what I say. Because fuck Dolph Ziggler. Piece of crap. Waste of space. Cyanide Rain asked, whatever happened to the Wild Wednesday Q&As? Those were crazy and fun. Eh, kind of. Like, not enough people asked enough fun, silly, off-the-wall BS questions that you usually, I feel like, get the best reaction out of me anyways is when you really get schlag mode, is when you really get the schlag daddy uh, experience. I wouldn't mind doing them again, but people have to ask better, funnier questions. I don't want to go into a Wild Wednesday Q&A and have somebody ask me, how would you book this shit all the way up to frickin' Silver Slam? Oh, that's not what it's fucking about. That's not what it's about. It's ridiculous. Anyways, maybe they can come back at some point. And if you want them to come back, then let me know in the comments section. Jimmy asked, better on the mic, The Rock or Jake the Snake Roberts? Um, I think overall better is The Rock. Jake was phenomenal, though. The way that he could captivate you and mesmerize you. Didn't have to say a bunch of funny crap. Didn't have to sit there and use a bunch of borderline language. He used tone, mannerisms, posture, choice of wording, delivery. He was just mwah, outstanding. Just outstanding. And if I was teaching promo classes, I would probably teach more of Jake than I would The Rock. Because Jake's promos 30 years ago still hold up today. If Jake was in today's wrestling business cutting those same promos from 30 years ago, he would potentially be thought of as the best talker in the business. The Rock from 20 years ago doing that stuff today, different time, it's a different place, and it just doesn't resonate exactly the same. Um, technically better on the mic in his time, The Rock. I feel like the guy that has more staying power, more longevity, in terms of what he talked about, was Jake the Snake Roberts. <laughs> Um, Edward Call asks, would taking Roman off of TV and giving him a new look um, a few months later help him? I don't think so. Not really. People are going to want to boo on him. They're going to want to boo on him. So what the hell difference does it make, really? All you would do if you took him off TV for three months and then brought him back is that first night he would come back, you would get the five seconds of pop that would be followed by the even louder boos and you'd be right back in the same place again and you'd just didn't use the guy for three months for the fuck all of it, really. Uh, Brink Doofus asked, Do you think Enzo and Big Cass end up having a tag match at All In? No. Why the hell would they be a part of that event? Um, it'd be kind of funny to see, I can't lie, but I don't see it happening. Especially with Big Cass getting terminated, I believe he would have the standard 90-day no-complete clause uh, in his WWE contract, so... If All In was shown on pay-per-view, that would rule him out. Uh, Voice of Logic asks, thoughts on Triple H's new NXT UK? There's a new NXT UK? That tells you exactly what the fuck I feel about that. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, because they needed that. Oh, great. Even more fucking product for them to run into the damn ground. Ugh. Anyways, thanks to all of you again for sending in your questions for part one of this Q&A. Part two is coming out soon, so check it out. Stay tuned, bitches.